Hello everyone. I'm going to continue on doing some more twine stuff. For Before we continue and add even more complicated stuff like pictures, sound, videos, and all of that fun stuff, I just wanted to talk about a little bit about the twine toolbar at the bottom here. Uh, we talked about test and play last time. New passage, if you just want to add a new passage altogether and not really attach it to anything, you could just click the new passage button. Like we talked about last time, the um, twine automatically makes a new passage once you do the double square brackets and put a new word in. If you have a big, big story, you might want to zoom out. So the easiest way is just to show the tiles or you can zoom out even more, just the structure. So just the structure, just the tiles or the whole thing. Um, if you do control plus in your keyboard, or control minus, you can kind of zoom out a little bit more automatic, but Twine has those three kind of options there at the bottom. Uh, if you are looking for something, you can do the kind of more advanced version of that, or just do a quick find. So I know the word kitchen is used. So if I type in kitchen, it will show up. It will also show me any other commands as well. So if I do that uh, straight line down for when we did the multiple options. So what will you do today? Option one. And this was for the yummy toast with that was actually a salad. So we have those uh, quick find abilities here as well. So we have the different view modes and the quick find. If you click on the arrow here, the edit story JavaScript is if you want to start kind of messing with the Java uh, of the twine story. So that's a little bit more advanced. So we'll do that much, much later. Uh, edit story style sheet. This is mostly going to be used for our backgrounds and we'll do this in a few uh, videos, but not right now either. So we'll leave that for now. Uh, change story format. This is a very, very important one. If you're looking for help online or in forums, the basic one or the default one is the uh, 3.1.0. There's snowman and sugar cube as well, which are other kind of formats of the story format for twine. So make sure that you are aware which one you're on. If you're just on the default one, you're just in that first one there. Um, you can rename the story, you know, Mr. Cardona's adventure, pretty good name. We'll just leave it. Select all passages. If you want to select all passages as the name implies, uh, snap to grid is if you want to keep things organized. So if I select snap to grid, there's a check mark beside it and the movement is kind of more, you know, snapping to the grid. So I can only move in twos, uh, by square up, up, up or to the side. So it kind of snaps to that background grid. If I don't have that option selected, it kind of just glides around a little bit more. So it depends how you want to organize it. Some people like to snap to grid on just so that things kind of click in position and are a little bit more organized. So up to you how you want to do it. Uh, for most of my videos, I don't really have that snap to grid on. I just keep it uh, all kind of floating everywhere. Some people don't like that kind of organization, so they might not do that. So up to you how you want to do it. Just a free flowing one, especially when you're just starting out with a structure. You don't want to be restricted to the grid, so you can just kind of place it wherever you want and then move it around as you need it. Uh, story statistics is just as it sounds. It tells you the statistics of your story so far, how many characters, how many words, passages, links, and hopefully no broken links in your stories. Uh, this one is a super important one, a view proofing copy. It opens a new tab that has all the text in one kind of giant document. You can copy and paste this into somewhere that has a kind of grammar check inside. Uh, Twine unfortunately doesn't have any uh, grammar checks. So if I type something incorrectly, like anything, uh, there's no spell check in Twine. So you have to make sure you have that checked up later on. So the, the usual way that people do it, or at least how I do it is at the end, I would just go view proofing copy, copy all this and put it somewhere else that has a spell check turned on. And then I can just fix the mistakes there. Uh, that's one kind of easy way to do that. So that's important for uh, your, you know, spell check. Publish to files if you want to send it to someone. So like I was saying, Chrome as the browser is a very kind of 
you know, easy one to do it in because the HTML file, I can just copy and send that to anyone. And if they have twine, they can open it and edit it themselves. Kind of look at the structure. If they don't have twine, they just kick, click on the HTML. It will just open it as a game. So it'll look like this on their end. If you do have the file, if you go to the home here, so again, this is our story, how it looks like right now. If I go to import file, I can import any of the HTML files that you have. So if you are receiving from a friend, you're sending it to someone and you want to look at it, you can go to import file and just use that file directly there. In terms of other things in the main tutorial here, you can have a night mode as well. So if you don't like that really, really bright white screen, you want the night mode instead, you can do that quick, easy change there. If you have multiple stories, edit by date or by name, you can organize it just like any other kind of organization file system. Um, and last but not least, you have the play story, test story, publish the file, rename, duplicate story, delete story as the options on the side here. Again, they're pretty self-explanatory in terms of what they do. And that's just the background for the twine. So just kind of the toolbar that you have available to you. You might not use everything right now, but it might be a video that you come back to later on. Uh, the last really interesting thing that you can do as well is if you are on the passages here, you can add a tag for uh, background or labeling purposes. You might need tags, but the one thing that a lot of people, especially in the beginning, do that are, is very interesting is you can create a tag and also color code it. So if I color code it red, it gives it a nice kind of red outline here. So what I can do is I can tag all the foods the same color so I can keep track of that option. So, you know, once you start making more complicated stories, you can have a specific tag for an option. So let's say an option takes you to a new room. You can have them all labeled by rooms or by, you know, scenarios, so on and so forth. So that's something you can do as well when you are making the story. Okay. So overall, that's the toolbar at the bottom, and that's the color schemes that you can change in your story. Thank you for watching. Have a good day.